to another episode of Mop Points for Garage. So now the block is torn down and uh, you saw in the last video uh, me breaking this thing down. I've also kind of got it clean. So, uh, but after agonizing all over the month of December and part of the month of January, I figured out what I'm gonna do. This is a good 97 Ford Explorer block. So I measured the bores in six areas. Each bore in six areas. Three from back to front vertically, three from back to front horizontally. I marked down all of those numbers and uh, I was gonna show you those in this video to kind of explain the reason why I'm doing a stock 5.0 five, uh, build um, with a stock bore without doing anything other than honing the, the cylinders. Um, I have been doing some exploring and um, I told you, I also explained in the last video that our machine shops here seem to be somewhat expensive compared to what, um, to what I thought. Uh, but talking with the local Bronco group, we had a suggestion from a guy from a, from a shop down in Denver uh, that uh, a lot of people said that they used. So I gave them a call, really super nice people. Uh, they were going to charge me $180 uh, to overbore the block. Uh, which I think is exceptional. And there's absolutely no reason for $180 why I wouldn't try to get this thing totally square uh, so that when I do that stock build, uh, I know I'm building it on a really good base and I don't have to worry about that. Um, then I started to look around because stroking this motor is something that I've, I've always wanted to have a stroker and I don't know why. But um, it's always been super expensive and I really don't want to put that money into a car that I'm not going to drive as much as I'm driving like for instance the Raptor right now. Uh, but I had an epiphany and I came across something that has totally changed my mind on this. Uh, we are going to stroke this motor. It's a done deal. I've, I've got the part sitting in my checkout box right now to check out and uh, we're just going to do it and I'm just going to throw caution to the wind and, uh, and that's the way we're going to go on this. So let me show you the reason why it's going to be controversial. Controversial. It's going to be controversial. Here's the reason why it's going to be controversial. I'm going to do this, at least I'm going to try, with a stock 97 Ford Explorer intake and computer system. And uh, I know it's been done, I've seen that it's been done, I've heard that it's hard, and I've heard that uh, this intake will choke that motor out a little bit. Uh, and I understand that. But here's the other part of why this is going to be controversial. This is the other reason why it's going to be controversial. I'm going to stay with the stock GT40 heads. I'll go through that here in a little bit. Uh, but um, yeah, controversy. I just can't stay away from it. All right, so right about now, you guys are thinking uh, uh, that, you know, Chris, you're really stupid. Why would you go and do something like that? You could just buy, uh, for $800 to $1,000, you could buy really high-flowing head, replace your GT40 heads, and, um, and keep the 5.0 and probably have the same horsepower. You're also saying, Chris, why would you do that? And, uh, and you could keep everything stock and go with an aftermarket intake uh, and maybe even bump the horsepower about the same. And some of you are even saying, well, Chris, why would you be stupid enough to do that when you could just do a cam swap and probably get the same amount of horsepower out of it? So cam swap or head swap or intake swap or stroking it are all gonna make more horsepower, right? Here's my thought process on this. It took me a long time to get here, so don't rain on my parade, man, all right? so. I wanted to originally do a Coyote swap in this truck right here. Coyote swaps are going to run a lot of money, like six grand, I don't know, more than that possibly. Uh, I can get a motor for three, then you got to get everything to run it, and anyway. So uh, I don't want to put that much money into this truck right now. Um, so I was looking at horsepower numbers and stuff like that, and obviously I've got a Raptor, I've been looking at the Raptor numbers, and people have been pulling horsepower out of these motors for a long time very equivalent to what a, uh, a, a newer um, a Coyote motor will, will pull, okay, a stock Coyote motor will pull. Um, the reason why I'm doing it in this configuration is I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be boring out and stroking this block. Then I, now I have a base 
for whatever else I want to do, okay? I am also going to be putting in a new cam. So there will be a new cam. I'm going to be upgrading the springs. So I'm going to be buying a cam and I'm going to be buying springs. So I've got a stroked motor with a new cam and springs in it, but I'll go through that in the next video and show you exactly what I'm buying and why I think it might work. I'm just going to do it. So that said, I've got a really good base with the 347 lower. I've got a really good cam in it, or I think I upgraded cam anyway. So what am I going to do about the stock intake and heads so that uh, I don't completely choke this out? Well, I'm going to try my hand at porting these. They cost me almost nothing, and I've really got nothing to lose. So they're both on. If it doesn't work, I can just go get another one and try it again, or get another one and not do it at all. Uh, if I screw this up. So I've been watching videos on uh, porting in general and I think I can do that. I think I can I think I can do that. So we're gonna try porting this, porting the uppers, porting the heads, okay, to get more airflow in there and then maybe switching off the throttle body. Don't know yet. Don't know yet. Here's my thought process on the way that I'm handling it now. If I can get the block, the 347 block, to be solid with a good cam um, <clears throat> and good good uh, stroking kit, uh, balanced correctly um, and sealed correctly, then at that point, I plan on, as soon as this thing is built, taking it down to the local dyno and getting it dynoed to see what happens at the wheels. It'd be really interesting to see what a stroker with uh, stock-ish ported intake and a stock-ish ported heads, GT40 heads, It'll be interesting to see what it'll lay down at the wheels on a Bronco and then I can everything else for upgrade is bolt-on so I can I can actually bolt on new heads later uh, and it's super easy and I've already got a base that can handle it I can upgrade the intake later and put a better intake on it and I've got a base that can handle it so there is lots of upgrade left in this motor once I get it done plus it will all be electronic uh, through the uh, Ford Explorer electronics. So um, if I need to have it tuned, <clears throat> I will likely need to have it tuned and there are people that can do that. So maybe even people locally that can do it. So, uh, so I'm not really worried about that. And there's lots of help out there, lots of people who know lots of things. I'm just the stupid guy that does it on video so that you guys can see it. In the next video, I'm gonna be laying out the parts that I found, the total cost. I have one small question about cam. I'm going to throw the cams out there, and that video will be literally right after this upload, so you watch it as soon as you get done here, um, and help me choose a cam because I'm a, little bit, um, I'm a little bit wondering about what I should do about a cam, but I've got about six choices that I'm looking at. Um, and then we're going to go through the total build cost of the 347 as it sits before I actually build it, so that you guys will know what that expense is and maybe the reasons why I've decided to go stroker on this when initially I wanted to go a stock build. That is a wrap for Mile Point 3 Garage. Paint was a long episode. This took forever to get the paint done. I promise the engine will be much faster. I just need your help. Hit that subscribe button. It's just getting interesting. And, um, and let's go build a stroker.